Thanks to Audible for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel. So, like many people on the internet as of late, I've been playing a fair bit of this game called Among Us. But, as many of my friends will tell you, I'm not a very good liar. Wait, why do you think it's me? So that's what you did, right? I was running away from right. you. Right. I go to electrical. I think he was scared that we would find yeah, some body that he was so. running from. I think it's him. And I'm also not very good at telling when other people are lying, which means I lose my fair share of games. But I am good at a few other things, including building tools in this little app called Notion. Now, if you've watched any videos on my channel before, you've probably heard of Notion in the past. If you haven't, Notion is an app that a lot of people use as a note-taking app, but it can be used for a lot more than that, including building what could be the ultimate Among Us tracker tool, which I'm gonna talk about in this video. You read the title, right? So this might blow up my face. I'm going to attempt to make a video explaining some high-level concepts in Notion while also explaining some high-level concepts in Among Us and also show you this template that I built and also let you use it if you want to. Uh, and I guess we'll just get that out of the way right up front. If you want to use this template, it is public. You can duplicate it. You're going to find it over at thomasjfrank.com templates and I will have a link in the description down below. So go and duplicate it and follow along if you would like. Otherwise, sit back, grab a bag of popcorn or whatever it is that you eat when you watch my YouTube videos, maybe nothing. I, I, I would hope that my videos are worth popcorn, but we're gonna get into this. So we've got this Among Us game tracker here, which I was too busy figuring out if I could build to wonder whether or not I should. Your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. And I've seen versions of this sus tracker before. I don't know who built this, but I've seen another YouTuber using a little tool where they could essentially drag around little cards for each character and, you know, mark if they were sus, mark if they were innocent, mark if they were dead. So that was my initial inspiration to build this template. I wanted to see if I could recreate that in Notion. But once I did that, I got to thinking, what else can we do? And as it turns out, there's quite a bit that you could do. So, like I said earlier, we have our original sus tracker, but if we switch over to one of these views, Skeld Game, Mirror HQ Game, Polis Game, these are tailored for the three different maps in the game. So let's just click Skeld, which is the first map in the game, and we got this table with all kinds of information. First off, we have a column here that can show the sus level for any player. And this is a great way for tracking who is suspicious and who's not suspicious. So let's say we see one player coming out of electrical and then a few moments later, there's a dead body in there. We can go ahead and mark them as sus and anybody marked as sus is going to be sorted down to the bottom of the chart so you get a bit of a sort order here and you can see who has the most suspicion on them as the game goes on we've also got a vote tracker so you can track who voted on who which can also give you some crucial information for deducing who may be the imposter i'll show you a little bit about that later it's kind of an advanced thing so i want to talk about some other features first we also have a location area and this is really cool because it also ties into a column called vent info so if you've played at least one game of Among Us, you have probably seen somebody pop out of a vent and possibly kill you before jumping back into that vent and scurrying away to basically go scot-free. And if you're trying to figure out who might have killed another player and uh, you're asking them where they are on the map, this could be very useful for you. So let's just say Purple said that they were in electricity. We can tag them with electrical and we can see here that in Skeld, there is a vent loop between med bay, security, and electrical. This is pretty helpful because let's say somebody finds a dead body in med bay and you saw a player running out of electrical. Now you know there's a pretty decent chance that they could have killed in med bay, jumped in the vent over into electrical and walked out of the bottom, acting as if they were never in the place where the murder happened. But you know better now. So this vent info column is just a great way to learn the layouts of the maps and to learn where the vents are, which is gonna help you make better deductions. But that is not even close to where I stopped when it comes to locations. We've also got a location reference, a task reference, and an abilities reference. And these are hidden in toggles. So by default, you're not gonna see them. You're gonna have a clean view, but if you need to look something up, this is where you're gonna to wanna to go. So let's take a look first at this tasks list here for Among Us. Again, we can switch our view. Right now we're looking at all tasks Tasks, but if we're playing a game in the Skeld, well, then we only want to see the tasks that are in the Skeld. And that's what we can do by switching over to this view. So here you're going to
going to see all the tasks in alphabetical order along with their type and their location. Both of these types of information are very, very important for being able to make deductions and to be able to catch imposters out in their lies, or maybe lie better if you're an imposter. For instance, there are different types of tasks in the game. There are short tasks and long tasks. So short tasks take very little time to complete, like cleaning the O2 filter. Long tasks take a bit longer and can have multiple stages sometimes, like filling up the engines. And then there are the common tasks. So each map has between two and four common tasks. And the unique thing about these is that if you are given a common task, every other player gets it as well. And there are also visual tasks. So this is kind of like a subtask. It's usually attached to long tasks, but sometimes to short ones. And a visual task has a visual indication that you've completed it, which means it's a great way to prove that you're innocent if you're a crewmate, and it's something that you want to avoid faking if you're an imposter. So here's a great example of why it's important to know which tasks are visual. Here's an older clip of me faking prime shields, which is a terrible task to fake as the imposter, because if somebody had walked in, they would see that there was no visual confirmation. But of course, Among Us is a bit deeper than that. So if you open up this entire database and you look at the notes tab, you're gonna see that there are some notes for certain tasks. For instance, fix wiring is a very interesting one because it is a common task. And if you're assigned it, you have three panels at random that you're assigned to go fix. However, there is an order to those panels, an order that I have listed exactly as it is in the game here in the Notion Tracker. So if you see somebody going immediately to cafeteria to fix wires right when the game starts, well, then you know they're faking that task. And lastly, we have the location tab. So this is very useful for learning the layout of the map, learning where things are, catching people out in lies. But with this Notion Tracker tool, we have something else interesting that we can do. We have this tasks table, which lists the location for each task, but if we go back to the tracker and we come down to this location reference, you'll see that I've got a location page for each of the three maps in the game, Skeld, Mira HQ, and Polis. And if we go into the Skeld page, we can see that all the same data is here, but it's displayed in a different way. So now we can see all of our different locations in this map. We've got admin, we've got cafeteria, we've got communications, and we can see the tasks that are in each area, the abilities like the admin ability or the emergency button, and we can also see the vents. So for instance, if you look at the admin location here, we can see that it vents to the cafeteria and also to the right cam zone, which is in between navigation, O2, and shields. So again, this location reference will make you a better player by helping you learn the maps more effectively. And how we do this in Notion is with a feature called relations. You can either relate one database to another or relate one database to itself. In this case, we're taking advantage of both different methods. We're relating the tasks database to the location database to get our little task groupings here. And then we're relating this location database to itself so we can get the vent locations. And just as a side note, making an Among Us template is not the the only way you can use relations to great effect with a notion. For instance, what if you wanted to make a task manager that also managed large projects? Well, you could do that if you use a template like the one I just released called Ultimate Tasks. So here in Ultimate Tasks, just to show you real quick, if we open the views toggle here, we can see different views like today, where we can see all the different tasks that are due today or that are overdue. But we can also see that some of these tasks are associated with different projects. And if we go back to the dashboard of the task system, we have have a different projects database. For instance, this one right here is for website redesign. And if we go into it, it's looking a lot like our scaled map reference. We have all the tasks related to this project within one table, or if we want, we can switch over to a Kanban style board. But when you come back over to this today view, you see the tasks listed there as well. And if you're interested in this template it is completely free and I'll have a link to it in the description down below. You can also get all of my templates over at thomasjfrank.com slash templates. And related to this, I actually launched a brand new channel recently called Thomas Frank Explains, which has a lot more Notion tutorials on it. And there's already a video up explaining this template in detail, explaining how you can use Notion for robust task and project management. So check that out. Link will be in the description down below. But as for this video, let's get back into some Among Us strategies. Okay, so we're back in our location reference and hopefully I've explained the concept of relations enough that I can go back to our original tracker and show the vote tracker. So just like we did with the vent reference in the location tracker, the vote tracker is a self-relation to the same database. 
So if people are voting on purple for whatever reason, purple did some suspicious stuff, well, then we can go and track who voted on purple. Let's just say that black did, lime did, cyan did, red did. And when I click out of here, we're gonna see that the voted by column now lists everyone who voted for purple, but we also see everyone who voted for purple in the voted for column. So this feature can give you extra information. You can essentially track where people are voting, track who they weren't voting for, and you can make deductions based on that. Lastly, we have a couple of other columns in this tracker here. One is just called travel direction. So if you see somebody running a specific direction out of a room, you may want to tag that for extra information. And then this active checkbox basically controls a filter to show only characters who have their active checkbox checked. So if you have a game with only 10 players, which I believe is the max, you could uncheck two of them to make sure they're not showing up and gunking up your tracker. Now, speaking of gunking up your tracker, once you're done with a game, what do you do to reset it back to its original state so you can play another? one. Well, you could go through here and delete everything and that would be kind of a pain, but you could do it. Or you could take advantage of one of Notion's other very powerful features, which is its template feature. So down here, I've got a little button called new among us game. And if you click that button, it's going to generate a brand new squeaky clean tracker. And actually, if we go inside this button by clicking the little gear button right here, we can see that inside this template block is an exact copy of this tracker. So if you wanted to start from scratch without having to uh, go back and reset everything, you could simply delete this one like so. And now you have your tracker right here. And if you're playing on Mira, go ahead and switch to the Mira game. If you're playing on Polis, go ahead and switch to the Polis game. They're all set up and there is filters and property selections to basically give you only the information that you need. Now, one potential problem with this setup, you deleted the past tracker. And what if you're a hyper competitive, super hardcore Among Us player like Matt Pat from Game Theory, who said in one of his videos that he actually tracks his win loss percentage and had it at about 87% wins. And you wanna go back and study all your previous games to make sure that you're as strategic as possible. Well, you don't wanna be deleting your trackers, do you? So if you go to the bottom here, we have another database called Among Us Game Record. And there's a template in here. It's actually several templates, one for each map of the game. So if we click a scaled game template, we're gonna generate a brand new game that has everything that we just went over hidden inside of it. So if I open this as a page, we can go ahead and call this maybe game two. We can tag it with the players if we want to. Let's just say I was playing with Toast and Corpse and Pokey. Uh, and it's an imposter game or a crew game. Maybe it's a crew game. I can go in here and I can do everything that I just showed you, but now it's in its own little database record. So you can keep all of your play stats. You can keep everything you did, and then you can go back and just uh, create a new game from the template and save the record of all of your games. So if you wanna study your past performance, if you want to study things people said and go review your gameplay, this could be a tool that would help you do that. So that brings us to the final question. Will using this template make you a better Among Us player? Well, I hopped on with a few of my friends, Patrick from Tier Zoo, my agent Dave, a few other people, and I tried using this template during some gameplay and I have some thoughts. Number one, this template absolutely does help with memory memorizing certain things. The reference is very, very helpful, but I also found that it sort of pulled my focus away from the game. And because I was trying to tag things, it made it a little bit harder to pay attention to the discussion when we found a dead body or when an emergency was called. So what I would consider this to be is a training tool. You could use it during certain games to learn maps more efficiently or to learn the play styles of your friends, or you could use it after the fact to study the different maps of the game or study your own gameplay by tagging things from memory. Either way, hopefully you find it helpful. And like I said, there's gonna be that template link in the description down below where you can grab it and duplicate it for yourself. Oh, and one last thing, bring it on toast. So hopefully some of the stuff you saw in this fun little video gave you some new ideas for pushing Notion in directions that you hadn't thought of before. Personally, I love finding new ways to use this app, as you might have also seen in my recent video on how I've built shortcuts into my iOS home screen to launch specific Notion pages instantly. And of course, I've got Notion right on the home screen as well. But there's another app on my home screen that I want to talk about for a moment, which is Audible. Audible is one of my absolute favorite apps because I love to listen to audiobooks. And if you've got lots of time during the day where you do chores, or you're commuting, taking walks, 
talks, or even when you're just trying to fall asleep, listening to audiobooks can be a way to make that time a bit more enjoyable or possibly even a bit more useful. And of course, the best place on the internet to get your hands on audiobooks is Audible. They have an absolutely unmatched library of not just audiobooks, but podcasts, guided wellness programs, comedy, and even Audible originals that you can't get anywhere else. And something new about those originals is that as a member, you can now listen to every single one that comes out each month instead of only having to pick two, which is a pretty great deal. And what's also a great deal is that if you go over to audible.com slash Thomas or text Thomas to 500-500 on your phone, you're going to get a free 30-day trial of Audible along with a free audiobook download of your choosing from their entire library. Now, that library is huge, so if you're looking for a recommendation, this month I want to recommend one of my favorite narrative nonfiction books of all time. I listen to it almost every night when I go to sleep. It's called Ghost in the Wires by Kevin Mitnick, and if you like the social engineering and the sort of cat and mouse games from Among Us, but you also like computers, then you're really going to enjoy Ghost in the Wires. Of course, if you're looking for something more along the self-development lines, then you may also want to check out James Clear's Atomic Habits, which is narrated by James Clear himself, and that'd be a great pick to use your free trial on. But of course, there are thousands of titles in the library, and you can pick any single one of them with that free audiobook. So once again, go over to audible.com slash Thomas or text Thomas to 500-500 on your phone to get started with that free trial. Beyond that, if you enjoyed this video, well, number one, hit that like button to show the YouTube algorithm what's up. And number two, definitely go check out my brand new channel, Thomas Frank Explains, where I've got a new video all about turning Notion into a great task management app. I've also got a couple of other videos with some additional Notion tips, and I've got new videos coming all the time. So hopefully you enjoy it, and if you do, hit that subscribe button. Beyond that, I'll have a couple of other videos on screen that you can check out on this channel, or at least one. And uh, if you don't want to click that, if you don't want to subscribe, well, don't, and go play video games for the next 16 hours, because as always, I am not your dad. Thomas Frank, you're shit. I don't respect you and you're a bad liar. Do better.